Okay, so after some cleanup, um, here is our example. Remember, we basically need two things. Uh, the production possibility frontier for this model and then the utility function. All we have to find at the end is the price ratio in competitive equilibrium. So the problem one, the firm's problem, firm's problem. The, the problem of the firm is to maximize the profit, all right, uh, subject to the constraint. So what is the profit? Well, the profit is, well, here, the firm produces two consumption goods and sell them in the market. So uh, what are the prices that um, the firm can sell those? Well, the good X will be sold at a price PX. So PX times X is how much revenue you can get from uh, selling X amount of good X. And then PY times Y is how much uh, money you're going to earn from uh, selling uh, Y amount of good Y. So this is your revenue minus there is no cost. So therefore, this is your profit uh, subject to, however, you have a constraint. You cannot produce Y more than uh, this. All right. So it's going to be uh, 13.5 minus 0.5 X square. So this is well, what do you choose? You choose both X and Y, non-negative, because the PX and PY, these are the prices. So the prices in the market are fixed. The seller takes the prices as given. So in the general equilibrium, once again, the seller takes the prices as given, the buyer takes the prices as given, and then they just optimally find their supply or demand, the consumer finds the demand, and then the market clearing prices in states in step three. So here, therefore, PX, PY are not choice variables, only X and Y are choice variable. So to maximize this thing by choosing X and Y subject to the constraint. So how do I do that? Well, we can write the Lagrangian, but there's no need. Uh, you better do the substitution. So whenever you see Y, just plug it into your profit function. So your maximization problem will become maximized only by choosing X because Y will vanish because I'm writing this rather than y. So it's going to be xpx plus ypy. So y is 13.5 minus 0.5x square uh, uh, py. So this is the profit. And I'm choosing uh, to maximize, I'm choosing x to maximize this. So this is a function of uh, only one variable, which is x. So how do I do that? First order condition. What does that mean? That means I basically take the derivative with respect to x and set it equal to zero and solve for it, All right? So take the derivative of this thing. So for that reason, I just leave it blank. That means uh, if you take the derivative of this with respect to x, it's going to be px here plus, uh, it's going to be, so the derivative of this times py just zero, derivative of this thing is going to be uh, minus, uh, it's going to be two times 0.5, so it's going to be one x, so py times x equals to zero, all right? Hence, it means uh, uh, PYX equals PX, hence X equals PX divided by PY. So whatever that ratio is, we don't know it yet. This is how much uh, of the firm is going to produce. Well, let's put S here because that represents the supply for good X because this is the firm's problem. We're finding the supply on good X. And later, we're going to find the demand for good X. So it's better to put uh, some notation uh, here. I'm going to put superscript to differentiate the buyer's demand and the seller's supply. All right. OK, well, given that I found uh, the, the supply for uh, good X, what is the supply for good Y? Well, simple. Just use the production possibility frontier. The supply for good Y is 13.5 minus 0.5 times x square, which is, you know, this is the x. So the square of it is basically px squared divided by, rather than writing 0.5, I'm going to write it 1 over 2, uh, 2py squared. All right, so this is how much the optimally, uh, the optimal supply for the firm. All right, so this is it, the step one. Step two, uh, the consumer's problem. So the consumer's problem is maximize utility, all right, 
which is x times y, if you remember, uh, subject to the budget constraint. So what is the budget constraint? Well, the budget constraint is always revenue, I'm sorry, expenditure equals uh, income. All right, so what is expenditure? Well, the consumer buys the consumption good X and Y. So she pays money to buy good X and good Y. So this is how much she's gonna spend on good X if she consumes X mini. Well, this is X demand, by the way, all right? So eventually it's gonna be XD. So it's different than all those X's. But for notational simplicity, I don't want to keep writing xd, xd, xd all the way. So let me just treat it as x and later uh, I'm going to put the d term. But the px is exactly the same as px here because the market price is fixed. All right. So the buyer and the firm, the consumer and the firm takes the price as given. All right. So this is how much uh, she spends on good x. This is how much she spends on good y. So this is her... Uh, expenditure has to be equal to income. Well, she doesn't have initial endowment for good X and good Y so that she can't sell them and make money. Uh, but she has the firm and the firm hopefully makes some profit. So with that money, she buys good X and good Y. Okay. So uh, this is her budget constraint. Uh, pretty simple. So maximize the utility subject to the budget constraint by choosing some non-negative uh, X and Y. Well, again, how do I solve that? Simple. Use the substitution method. How? Well, uh, leave Y alone and write. So whenever you see Y here, just plug it, what you found here. So what is Y? Y is pi minus XPX divided by uh, PY. So whenever you see Y, so it's going to be a maximize, maximize uh, by choosing X. Uh, x times y, so it's x times pi minus xpx divided by py, all right? So the first order condition, the first order condition, meaning take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve for it, means if you take the derivative of this thing, um, so this is going to be pi x divided by py, so it's going to be pi minus x squared px divided by py. So it's going to be 2x px divided by py equals 0. All right. And if you solve this, uh, so let me write it here. All right. So all the way up here. So if you solve this, x is equal to pi divided by 2px. Uh, all right. Oh, um, that's my mistake. I'm sorry. Well, I'll come to that. So let's call this XD. All right. So this is the demand because we are solving the consumer's problem. So this is the optimal demand for the consumer. Well, the mistake I did, uh, it doesn't change anything, but I shouldn't have done that. Um, I should have done first calculate the profit once I found the optimal supply for good X and good Y, I should definitely calculate the profit and then plug it here. It's, it doesn't change anything mainly because the profit does not depend on X or Y. So it's just a function of PX and PY. So therefore, when I take the derivatives here, um, you know, the, the derivative of pi alone, so pi is a constant number, so it doesn't change anything. All right. But nevertheless, I should have done uh, uh, calculate the pi and then make sure that it doesn't depend on X and Y and then uh, proceed. OK, so my bad. I'm sorry. So what is the pi? What is the profit? So profit is remember is this guy. Uh, whenever you have the optimal X and optimal Y, just multiply them with the prices and add them up. This is the profit. So here is the optimal X and Y. So therefore, just multiply them. It's going to be PX squared divided by PY. So this is XS times PX. So it's going to be PX squared divided by PY plus PY times this. So it's going to be 13.5 PY minus PX squared divided by PY times 2 PY squared. So the PI cancels. It's going to be 2 PI. So this is equal to, so this is px squared py, this is px squared 
over 2 pi. So this is one half, I'm sorry, this is one whole, this is a half of this. So when I subtract, I'm gonna get 13.5 py minus uh, plus px squared divided by 2 py. All right, so this is what the profit is. And so as you see, it doesn't depend on x and y, so it's just a constant number. And hence, uh, the, the x, if you want, at the end, just leave it as pi, because notationally it's simpler. At the end, you can just plug the value, all right? So xd equals to the pi thing, which is this, divided by 2px. So uh, instead of writing 13.5, I'm going to write it 135 divided by 10. So if I divide it by 2 px, it's going to be 20 px. Uh, plus px squared divided by 2, uh, uh, px squared divided by 2 py divided by 2 px. So it's going to be px divided by uh, this px and this px squared will cancel out. So we're going to have px only. And then 2 times 2 for py. All right. So this is the total, or I'm sorry, the optimal demand for good x. And then I can calculate the optimal demand for good y. Uh, but I'm not going to calculate it because there's no point. Uh, you'll see. Okay. Um, and then that's it. This is the second uh, condition. The consumer maximizes its utility. Uh, we already solved step one, step two, and now step three. Step three, uh, market clearing condition, market clearance. Well, if you remember our previous arguments, if the market for one good clears, the market for the other good must clear with exactly the same price ratio. So therefore, all you have to check is, to, is, is the market clearance on one of the markets. So here, I'm going to clear the good X market because I did not calculate good Y demand. So this is why I didn't calculate the demand for good Y. All right. So I'm going to clear the market of good X. That means the demand for good X has to be equal to supply for good X. This is what market clearance is. There's no excess supply or excess demand. So what is the demand for good X? It's this fellow, 135 PY divided by 20 PX plus PX divided by 4 PY. That has to be equal to the supply of good X, which is PX divided by uh, PY. Okay, very good. So what am I going to do is that, well, this term and this term are related. This is, these are Px over Py, but this is the reverse, Py over Px. So I should send this to the other side and then subtract, all right? So it's going to be 135 Py divided by 20 Px equals to uh, Px over Py minus Px over 4 Py. But you know what? This equals to, this is 4 px over 4py, so minus this, it means 3px over 4py, okay? So now ignore this, uh, so let me ignore it for you. So ignore this, uh, so this is 3px divided by uh, 4py. So do further simplification, how so? The 4 and 20 uh, cancel out, we're going to have 5 here, 1 here, 3 and uh, 135 cancels out. We will have, uh, if you do this, I think this is 45. Um, yes, and this is 1. So what do I have? Oh, 5 and 40, uh, 45 cancels out. I have 1 here, I have 9 here. So what do I have? I have 9py divided by px equals px divided by py. Do the cross product. It means px squared divided by py squared equals to 9. Take the square root of both sides. It means px over py has to be equal to 3. You see? Uh, so, therefore, if this was a general equilibrium where the firm and the consumer are price takers, and the firm and the consumer maximizes their objectives, and then... Uh, the price ratio, Px over Py, has to be equal to 3. I mean, the price of good X must be 3 times more than price of good Y. All right, 
That means, therefore, the total supply for good X is 3, which is equal to total demand, right? I mean, if you plug the PX over PY here, you have to get exactly the same thing because the supply equals demand. This is how we calculated this price at the first place. Well, the supply for good Y is this thing, which is 13.5 uh, minus PX squared divided by PY squared, which is 9. So this is 9 over 2. So this is 27 minus 9 divided by 2. So this is uh, 18 divided by 2, 9. So the supply for good Y, and therefore the demand for good Y, has to be the same. Remember, if market X is cleared under those prices, well, then the market for Y must clear also with the same prices. So therefore, the, in equilibrium, three good X will be produced and consumed, and nine good Y will be produced and consumed. That's it. This is how we solve. I hope that was clear.